Hello, everyone. I took only one slide. I hope you can handle that. <laughs> um, and I took this uh, 17th century auto cue straight from the first Enlightenment movement. Um, who of you visited a museum the last five years? Raise some hands, please. Oh, wow. That's, <laughs> that's nearly everybody. Who of you? visited the museum the last five weeks. That's also nearly everybody. Well, that is a bit reassuring, because uh, now I dare to ask you a more difficult question. Um, who of you thinks the Dutch are cultural innovators? Ooh. And who of you thinks the Dutch are cultural followers? Okay, well, um, I've been working in the, in the cultural field for about 20 years, and these questions still keep me busy, and I still don't know the answers, but I want to talk about it uh, with you and see how far uh, we get, um, because I like to discuss how our culture is doing. Uh, you would think we are doing pretty well, because um, Museums get more visitors than ever. More than one million people in the Netherlands have a museum pass. That, that's amazing. It's growing very rapidly. Um, so something must go right. But I think um, we are still in a cultural decline. And I'd like to tell you why. Everything nowadays has to be result-driven. Every cultural professional has to be a cultural entrepreneur. We, as cultural entrepreneurs, cultural professionals, have to worry about the numbers of likes on Facebook. We have to worry about our target groups. We have to worry about the, 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 the numbers in our annual financial report. But we tend to forget about the process, about the creative process. Another thing, uh, especially in the museum world, where, where I co come from, um, experience was a magic word a few years ago. Every museum that took itself seriously had to at least design some experience um, things in their uh, museum. And it is, I think experience is often confused with um, uh, um, uh, uh, interaction. Experience for me is going into a roller coaster, being there, stuck for 10 minutes. After 10 minutes, they let you out, and you're a bit dizzy, but you really don't know what happened and why you got in in the first place, and if you learned anything at all. <laughs> um, that's how I experience experience. Um, but don't get me wrong, I mean, results are important. Financial, a sane financial organization is very important. And there's nothing wrong with a good experience, of course. But you as an audience are still not involved in this. And that's what bothers me. Uh, because there's no focus on the process. And um, you are not part of it. So what if the process is so interesting that we don't have to worry about the result? And the next step, what if we, you as an audience, are getting involved in the process? How wonderful would that be? So then we might become part of our culture. I'd like to give you a few, three examples of projects I liked and where involvement, participation, um, uh, it was important. I'm now the director of Arteans, a center for the arts in Alkmaar. Alkmaar is, for those of you who never get uh, more north than Amsterdam, it's 30 minutes north of Amsterdam. <laughs> um, we wanted to 
target a group uh, that, was, that came never um, in our building. Uh, senior citizens, uh, a new group for us. And um, we thought, well, we need to pay special attention to well-educated senior citizens because they have a problem. They hate to play bingo at the community center in their neighborhood. And there's not much else uh, they're offered. So we thought there is a chance. We put an advertisement in the local newspaper and asked uh, for volunteers. They applied and um, we interviewed them and asked them if they wanted to be a part of a team who would make a complete cultural program for people of the same age as they were. Um, and so they did. Uh, the only criterion was that it had to be about the arts. And the only thing we did was providing them with coffee and tea and a little guidance. They came up with the most professional program you could think of. Ten weeks in a row, there were sculpture classes, uh, drawing classes, theater classes. They, they stood on stage with a group of people, who, uh, young kids who had uh, Down uh, syndrome, who work also in our, our place. They, ma they made a play together. Uh, they invited the most inspiring lecturers. Um, during the process, other uh, volunteers wanted to join, and they were very picky. They were like, yeah, well, is he good enough? Uh, I'm not sure. We're, no, 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 we're, we're on the we have everything under control. And now it became such a big hit that everybody is worried about next season. Um, so how simple is that? We involved a new group. Let, we, di we didn't make a program. They did everything, and it was a huge success. Another example is how the corporate world can work together with cultural organizations and the audience. A, a, a wonderful project I still remember happened a few years ago. It started in New York City. It was a, a cooperation between BMW, who was the, the big sponsor, the Guggenheim Museum, and the people from New York. The Guggenheim built a small structure somewhere between two uh, residential buildings in the Lower East Side. It was basically a roof with, with a few television screens. And they started to fill it with uh, a very dense program. Architects, uh, designers, uh, artists, but also people from the neighborhood. They all were discussing the, the, uh, the way how to feel as comfortable as possible in the city. It was picked up by the city uh, of New York. Everybody joined in, and um, it became a huge success. It, you could follow it online, offline, uh, and it went to travel uh, to other big cities in the world. Uh, I think that's a good example for the cultural world, not to be afraid to work with uh, a corporation. Uh, ten years ago, when BMW would sponsor a big exhibition, they might uh, have put uh, their latest model in the entrance hall of the museum, but that luckily uh, changed, and now it's more um, inter uh, interacting and, inter and exchanging uh, knowledge, which is a good uh, development. And my last example is about how to interact with an individual artist. I'm the president of Club Idiot, and um, the other two board members are also in the audience, so feel free to uh, approach them later. Um, at Club Idiot, we stimulate artists who want to concentrate on the process and are not necessarily uh, busy with the result. Um, we uh, provide, we, we, we support them with uh, a little money, but mainly with our own skills and knowledge. We organize a lobby for them, we, org we, we design a book for them if necessary, stuff like that. And during the process, we involve the audience and they also offer their uh, knowledge to the artist. So the whole process is running while the artist doesn't have to 
worry about being a cultural entrepreneur or uh, sell himself to an, art, to an art gallery or an art fund. So those are three examples that give you a picture of how uh, uh, you can involve uh, yourselves uh, in, in, in projects of the cultural uh, world. When we want to enlighten ourselves, and that's, that's why we're here tonight, um, I think uh, it could help when we start focusing on the process again. Uh, the time is ripe for that, I think, ladies and gentlemen. And um, I think participating and co-creating work, that has been proven now. I'm convinced that we can get re-enlightened. Um, when we allow ourselves time for the process. When we really start to interact and exchange and participate. And when we really get involved and start co-creating. But cultural organizations have to open up to society. They have to uh, be aware of their social task. And we, as the audience, should get up from our easy chairs and get involved, play along. That's what happened actually in the, in, the, in the original enlightenment in the 17th century, when people stood up and started to question things that were unquestionable, actually. A reason suddenly had the X factor, and the, re the reason why we exist, if you wish. Uh, so, do you want to know the reason why you exist, why we exist? I think um, we can find out by starting to offer our experience to the cultural world. And we can find out by starting to co-create with each other and with the cultural world, instead of consuming more than we can possibly chew. And if we start participating instead of being entertained, in that roller coaster I was talking about. This will make our culture richer, I'm convinced. By working together, we will start to know each other and we will start to learn more about ourselves. By co-creating and participating, we will give the process the attention it deserves. This way, we will raise the status of our culture, which is very necessary, I think, in the Netherlands. And this way we will become culture, and this way we, will, we might get re-enlightened again. Thank you very much. <laughs>